Hello, and welcome to Calculus for Biologists. I'm Dr. Carter Johnson, and this is an introduction to the content of this course. Despite the title, this is more of a course in mathematical modeling than in traditional calculus, where we'll use calculus to build and understand our models. The goal of this course is to develop the skills you'll need to understand and analyze how mathematical models are used in biological sciences. Mathematical models are used to understand phenomena in neuroscience, physiology, pharmacology, genetics, ecology, and virtually every other biological science. I can go on and on, but I think the most convincing reason I can give you for why these skills are necessary to learn is so that you can better understand the data and reasoning behind the current public health policies we're living under. Epidemiologists are using mathematical models very similar to the ones we're learning in this class to make critical decisions about our lives, whether to open schools, whether to make masks, etc. So to illustrate some of the key concepts of this course, and give you a flavor for the types of questions that we'll be able to answer with our models, I'll start with some COVID case data from the CDC. Okay, so this is a graph from the CDC. It's also in the syllabus of the number of new cases per day as a function of data. So if we were to give this access some labels, this would be time variable, call it T, and let's say this is N, the number of new cases per day. Right, so in blue is the actual data, the values on each day of the number of new cases that day, according to the CDC headquarters. And in red here, or in orange, is the uh, seven day average, kind of like a fit for this data set. And so we could model that with a function, a f of t, and then we have you know, a very simple mathematical model for this data. Number of cases, some um, function. And so we can ask lots of different questions about either this graph, the data, or this function that we kind of fit to our data. All right, we can ask lots of different questions that might be useful to understand about this. You know, we could ask, you know, when is the number of cases, new cases? Increasing or decreasing, right? And so if we have the data, if we have this graph, you can kind of look and say, okay, here it's increasing, you know, over here it's decreasing, here it's increasing again, you know, over here it's decreasing, right? And you can kind of get a sense just from the graph. And so uh, with calculus, we'll use the derivative you know, of our function f of t to kind of get that same information from a mathematical expression, okay? Another question you might ask is, you know, what is the total number of cases? Right, overall, maybe not the total active cases, but the total cases overall. So, you know, from the graph again, we could just count up our cases, right? We have this many new cases on this day, that many on that day, so on. We could add up the heights of all these different blue bars, sum them up, and you get the total number of cases. Or we could use the integral of this function, which gives you the area under the curve, or, you know, the uh, area of all these tiny little rectangles if they had a million of them, you just summed all these areas up, you get the total area under this red curve, and that would give you the total number of cases overall. Okay? Let's say you want to ask a maybe more important question. Right? Uh, let me erase it here. What if you wanted to ask questions about the future? About the Right? What if you wanted to ask, let's say, um, how many new cases will there be next week? Or what number of new cases per day would still be safe enough to reopen businesses or universities? So what, what kind of 
small number of cases per day, maybe not zero, but small enough so that it doesn't trigger an outbreak in our community. And maybe, you know, an even more important question, you know, when will this nightmare be over? Okay. And these sorts of questions, questions about the future, you can't answer these questions from this graph alone. Right? You need to develop a mathematical model that describes the mechanism behind this graph. You know, how are these cases arising? Where are they coming? Is it really just a function of time? You know, just time goes on, the cases go up, and then they went down, and then they went up, and now they're going down again, so they're going to go down forever. Or is there something more mechanistic that we can get at with the model? Okay. And so what we learn in this class is you know, different types of models that we can apply to biological phenomena like this, how to analyze those, how to simulate them, and answer these sort of questions about the future, these predictions about the future. Okay? The key, the key thing is that predictions require a mathematical model. Okay? We can answer the other types of questions just from the graph or just from the data or our function. But if we want to go further, we need a model. Okay? There's a couple different types of models uh, that we'll use in this class. Okay? The two key kinds of models, you know, basic, basic functions and what's called dynamical systems. Okay. So a function, function just relates, you know, one or more variables to another. All right. So classic example would just be, you know, let's say y equals x, where x, y are proportional with m and they're offset by some constant. Right, so some line that they follow. And if you know x, then you can say, okay, I'll follow this model and I'll know y. Right, so take an x value. This model predicts blue. For a given x value, this model predicts a y value. Okay? A dynamical system, on the other hand, is a model in which the uh, you know the state of a variable changes with respect to another variable. You know, typically with dynamic systems, they change over time. We'll say the state of the variable changes over time. But as a function of not just time, but of its current state. State. And okay. And so, you know, what does that mean? So that means that um you know, th th this is more like an epidemic, right? The number of cases today is going to affect the number of cases tomorrow. The number of cases tomorrow doesn't really depend on time in so much as it depends on how many cases were there the day before. But it's not like it's just going to depend on time completely, right? So uh, there's different types of dynamic systems. There's discrete dynamical systems, discrete time. And then in discrete time, time is necessarily discrete. So this would be like the data I just showed. So T might be measured in days, so these discrete points here. And for each day, there's a new number of cases, right? So on this day, there's this many, and then it grows, and then it shrank, and then it grew again, right? And so, you know, the overall system looks like that, but it's measured at these discrete points in space. A discrete dynamical system is some system where the number, or, you know, one the state of you know, this variable, so the number of cases for the next day, is some function 
of the number of cases on the day before. Okay, so this is you know the general form of discrete time. This is just some function. Okay. The other type of dynamic system is continuous time. Okay. In the continuous time dynamical system, time is measured continuously. So, you know, this this is great for kind of discrete measurements and kind of simulating, okay, if I know the number of cases today, how many will there be tomorrow? But maybe you're interested in how many will be there in half a day or in one minute or in 10 minutes, right? So in this situation, you know, n is going to be measured at every point in time. Okay, so it's continuous in time. And for these systems, they're often modeled with uh, differential equations. So modeled with differential equations, which we'll learn about in this class. But they basically relate a derivative to measurements of both the state and the time. In this case, you have you know, the rate of change of your number of cases or your variable is a function of your current state and okay and then you know the third kind of dynamic system that we won't get into in this class are probabilistic dynamical systems where they're the same sort of situation where you have, you know, some rule that describes the growth of your variable. But you're accounting for the, either the uncertainty in your measurements or maybe some sort of extra noise or maybe in an epidemic model that accounts for kind of the randomness of human behavior, or the randomness of the disease spread. So it accounts for noise or uncertainty. Okay? And with these models, you don't just have an answer that comes out of it, you have kind of an ensemble of answers, right? So maybe in one simulation, the epidemic, I do what it did before, where it went down and then back up. But, you know, you know, this would be like one run. And then in the second run, it might go up, down, and then stay down and die off, right? Because there's some randomness, you know, you describe the rule and then you're simulating on a computer where you're trying to follow, you know, either this update rule, the screw time system, or maybe this update rule for the continuous time system. But then you're adding in noise at every step, so there's kind of an uncertainty of whether or not you're going to follow this rule exactly, or maybe you're going to get offset by a little bit. And so then you, you simulate this, you know, a thousand times or something, and then, you know, you, you total up, you know, the runs that, you know, either the epidemic died out or, or it exploded. So it's you know, the total of the runs that either died out or grew out of control. And you, you categorize the different solutions that come out of your system and evaluate their probability. Right? So this is more of the, the type of model that, that people use to, to assess risk, especially in public health policy, too. You know, they define their rules, but they add in all this noise, so it's not like they know exactly what's going to go on, but they can say, you know, you can say, for example, you could say 90% of our simulations Epidemic out of control. But then let's say you have some policies that you say, okay, we're gonna put a mask mandate in. You put that assumption into the model, and then maybe, you know, with mask mandate, for instance, uh, maybe now this this is reversed. Now maybe 90% of simulations the epidemic. Uh, dies out or it, or it ends, right? And so then you can kind of 
make your policy suggestions based on you know the different outcomes of your statistics and risks, your probabilistic dynamical systems, you know, the different outcomes of these with or without different policies and make your arguments. Okay. And so uh, we'll go over more in, in later videos, but I want to keep these videos short. Uh, so that is uh, the introduction. Thank you.